Greetings, I am Elijah. Greetings, I'm here for a very short period, but I wanted to speak directly to you about dreams and visions. Perfect. I know that there are many people having them these days, and I want to let you know what the difference is and why you are having them at this time. Remember, there are some dreams that mean nothing or mean little. But there are those means dreams with significance and those visions as well with significance. When you have a vivid dream, it has lots of character to it. It has lots of um, intensity and bright colors and a lot of detail. These are the kinds of dreams that you want to take into account because they are something given from a higher area of thought process. Many dreams are just sort of race, race through your mind or run through there. You remember them perhaps, but they are not, they are not vivid, they are not detailed, they are not in anything that you want to remember. But when you have these kinds of dreams that are very detailed, take heed and remember what they are. And also, those visions. Now, what is a vision, you may ask? That is when you are not asleep, that you see something before you, that something appears in your maybe half sleep, and but you know that you are awake. And it is also very vivid, very pure and very detailed. Remember what happens during these particular things because they have a message for you in the present or maybe the future. Or they may have a message for some people around you. So remember, dreams and visions at this time are happening a lot in the world. And you are the kind of people that would be having these kinds of dreams and visions. I know that there are some of you out there right now going, I do, and I need to know what they mean. So you may ask at this time if you would like to know what your dream or vision is about, because God is working in this society, on this planet, and in this world in a very unusual way, in a way that he has never worked before, because you see that there is an intensity with the earth itself that it's shaking it's cracking it's the weather is different than it ever was even thunder and lightning look and seem different than it used to and the the ways of the wind seem a little stranger to you than they ever were before is this uh, a coincidence i think not I think God is telling you that there is something different in the energies that are around you. I think God is telling you that there is a difference in the language that is being spoken in the world today because it has greater depth, greater meaning, and greater understanding in some ways. But take heed. There are those that are confused because they bring their own thought processes into their channelings or into their messages because they have a an agenda for themselves. They may want you to listen to them more, so they may bring a little more negativity in there so that it's more interesting. But believe me, the positivity that speak the speaking of positivity will be your greatest joy because Around you, you will find the greater negativities. Who needs more of it? You do not. You need the positivity. You need the light. You need the love. And you need the greater understanding of what is happening in a positive way. Do not shed a dark light on the things that are happening. Do not shed negativity on, on the things of the world, even though they may seem that way, and the people may seem to be negative. Look for the positive message. 
look for what could be a positive outcome. Even though you may dislike, in fact, some of the people that are bringing these things across, look for the positivity beyond their words and beyond the actions that you see because God is working and will bring all things into a greater light. Now, there may be times that seem a little darker, but fear not, they will come out. They will become a bright light to you. They will give you wisdom and understanding. They will teach you lessons of how to rise up and be a greater person, a better person, a more understanding person. And if you have gone through something that is very difficult, is that not a way, a lesson, to become a teacher of how to get through these kinds of things? How to help others know how to get through these kinds of difficult situations? Your teachings will be from your experience. And so, if you experience nothing, then you have nothing to teach. But if you will go through things in your life and come out successful or come out with a lesson or come out with meaning, then you have something to teach and they have something to learn. So now, if there is anyone out there that has a dream or a vision that they would like to share, please do so at this time. Yes, there's someone even here in the room. Come closer. And what is this, a dream or a vision? Is and it, was it very vivid? It's very vivid. It's the same dream I've been having for a long time. And it deals with like a situation like in an office area. But the office area sometimes is always different sceneries and stuff. And then my sisters come into this play, maybe not all of them. But it seems that I get in a fight with them. I'm yelling at them, screaming at them. And I don't know what all this has to do with the office and all, you know, them and et cetera. This has to do with when you used to work. Um, you still have some anger toward the, the situations that you ran into at your workplaces in the past. This dream is telling you to let go of those uh, angers and negativities because you take them out on your family and friends when you don't even know it. And so what God is telling you in this dream is that there is negativity that you still have not released or forgiven from the past. He wants you to say, I'm releasing this. I do not want to feel this anger or hatred or whatever it is any longer. And I do not want to pass it on to anyone else anymore. And these kinds of dreams are vivid because God needs to purify each and every one of you so that he can use you in a greater way. So in this, in this thought process, he is telling you, purify yourself, get rid of that anger, find a way to let that go because it's no longer working for you. It's no longer a part of who you really are. And it, you shouldn't w want to use that or even feel it anymore. Do you understand? There's something else you want to say. I was going to say it's like I'm also taking it out on my pets. Oh, yes. You take it out on everyone. Okay. <laughs> All kinds of negativity. See, this kind of, it was that you were not treated properly in your workplace. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. She was not treated properly in the workplace, and so she still has pent up anxieties and angers and, and maybe even regrets about what happened during that period of time, and she needs to forgive yourself. God has already forgiven you. He's already forgiven them, but he needs for you to say, I forgive myself and I bring in the understanding of light. Fill those places that were angry with light, love, and understanding, wisdom, and kindness. That's not easy to do. But 
when you forgive yourself, truly forgive yourself, then you can fill those empty spaces where the guilt, the shame, and the anger were. Fill that with light and love. Fill those empty spaces. Try to do that. Fill yourself with love. Fill yourself with understanding. And when you do things like this, when you fill yourself with love, what happens then? The negativity that once was in charge moves out or once was part of something that you you want to hold on to. A lot of people want to hold on to their anger. The reason for that is because they feel they need to, they have a message for these people that treated them badly. But the message is, I love you no matter what you do to me. I love you no matter who you are. I love you because God loves you. And you must learn to bring on that kind of attitude within yourself. Unconditional love is not easy. Many people think that they have it and they don't. They say, oh, I have unconditional love. I love everybody. I love everybody. But yet they fight with their mothers and fathers. They show anger and deceit and they do with uh, they do things that are against others intentionally this is not unconditional love you may it is easier to love the masses that have no face and no personality because you are not interacting with them it is easier to love the masses because you can say oh yes i have unconditional love i gave money to the storm i did this i did that i i helped those i gave clothing i gave food but when it comes to your own personal life the people around you you treat badly that is not unconditional love then my other question is is this part of my illness it is you're holding on to negativities and it affects the illness but it is not because what up uh, it is not the r main reason for the illness mm -hmm. the main reason for the illness is to let you know that you can move through anything you are strong you can be a greater pe person no matter how you feel in and no matter what ails you you can stand up and be a light an example a beauty and when they say how can you be this beautiful when you have so many infirmities you can know that God is being your example okay, thank you. you're welcome thank you Elijah thank you. Stephanie has a question Stephanie hello Elijah greetings, thank you greetings Stephanie okay. I had a dream just a few just a short portion of it I recall, but I'm not sure what to make of it. I was not in a setting with people. I cannot understand. We're oh. having a really hard time hearing you. You need to either get really okay. close up to your mic or yes, I'm going to turn it way up. Out. Get close to it, please. Thank you. Yeah. Is that better now? Is that better now? Yeah. Yes, that's Great. better. Yeah. Okay, I turned it way up. <laughs> I had a, a dream just a few days ago. None of the, the people or the settings or even myself was familiar to me so it could have been a past life or another uh, timeline but it was at my particular role in it i think i was some kind of i, I as a corollary i liken it to like a medicine man to the chief of the tribe but it wasn't um native american or anything and the, there was something that when something would happen, the, the leader, the king, the ruler, who, whatever his role was, would come to me, and I was the one that did something from a spiritual or energetic aspect. And I had done that in this dream. I had done that once on a smaller scale, and it was successful. But the part of the dream that stood out was and stayed with me after I woke up was the that 
something was coming and it was indeed happening. I was seated just behind this king or ruler or whoever it was. And it was just at the point where the expectation was, okay, now, whoever I was, I'm just gonna use my name now, but now Stephanie, here's where you engage. And exactly. I remember feeling not sure I was, you know, having some anxiety about being up to the task, although I was just going to go for it. I didn't understand any of that. And the reason for this was that you are the spiritual leader in your family. You are the spiritual leader for some others as well. When it comes to moving out into the community, even though they may not seem to uh, react to you as a spiritual leader. They see your goodness. They see that you are a light. And sometimes that causes them to treat you badly because they feel in um, lesser than you. They feel that you are that are, you are better than they are. But you, although you do not put that on yourself, you do not say I'm better than you are. They put that on you, and they they react to it in in a very different way than you might think but also your family you are a light in your family and this is what your your dream is really about is that there once was a, a male personality that you were backing up the leader the king whatever you want to call it but the king is not there and so he calls on you to do the the spiritual leadership your spiritual leadership is what is necessary in the family they do come to you even though they even though they may not be there now their thoughts are turning to the things that you said as a spiritual leader and they feel guilty perhaps they feel that they need to change but they don't know how so keep praying for them keep being the beacon for them the lighthouse guiding the ship to the shore because many are lost at sea at this time not only in your family but those around you but you must be the beacon you are the spiritual leader and i know that sometimes you feel i need to be taught as well I need strength as well. I need to know that this is the right thing as well. But listen to me carefully. These assurances come to you now and then, and, and sometimes they come to you more often than you want to think. You see the positivity of your actions. You see the positivity of the atmosphere around you directly around you you see the positive uh light that you have given to the atmosphere that you live in so continue to do that because that atmosphere is warmth and comfort for those of your family that feel a little cold thank you very much thank you um Amazing Love has a question. Amazing Love, I love that. <laughs> I hope they can talk. Continue. Can you talk? Speak okay. to me. Uh, she said she's in a cafe, um, and she, yeah, if you type your question, I'll ask it for you. In the meantime, while she's typing her question, I actually have a question, if I may, Elijah. Very well. I've had very, very in-depth dreams the last week, more so than where I feel like I have this whole other life going on in my dreams. Um, and I wake up and I think, wow, I'm very busy at night. And for instance, the, the two nights ago, I dreamed that I had rented a very nice new apartment. And then at some moment I realized that I hadn't sold my house. And then I was a little bit panicking because I realized that at the end of the month, I was going to have to not only pay my mortgage, but pay the rent on a, an apartment and uh, I ended up asking the people where I was renting if I could sublet and they said sure. And then the next day I was actually having an argument with a person who uh, poured milk on my iPad and I, I, I was really upset about the fact that they had done that deliberately. And just, you know, but these dreams were very, very detailed. They were very much like 
conflict and resolution oriented and and even this morning I'm not quite sure what I was dreaming but it seemed to be of that same finding you're, myself in a situation you know you're at the beginning of a of a journey and the beginning of a journey is always conflict at times because you want to make sure that you're moving in the the absolute right direction and sometimes when the the dream about the apartment and the house is that you do have to take chances when you're on a journey you take a chance you move and you're you're leaving something behind but you're moving on to something better but yet there is a conflict there because you're not sure if that is the true way to go but let yeah. me tell you this take those chances they are telling you to take those chances they are telling you to move forward they're telling you when somebody pours milk on your ipad it's saying <laughs> you're using it too much and, really? and that you need to uh check in with the spirit about what he is talking about what he is trying to tell you at this moment at the beginning of this journey because right now you need to be focused a little bit in the future you need to be focused a little bit uh, uh, beyond the present so they are telling you yes all these present things all these things that seem right now let's not look at them let's look at the future for a moment that new apartment that new place that new understanding where am I going? What am I doing? How am I feeling about that? Sometimes you're feeling a little bit angry because you're not going to be able to be the same as you were. And that's going to take you out of your comfort zone. Wow. And they're telling you that you're going to be out of your comfort zone and that you are going to experience some wonderful things outside your comfort zone. <laughs> okay. Awesome. And that is where you're heading right now. Perfect. You wow. That. Well, that's relevant. Thank you very much. Yeah, I've got a lot of new things coming, and they're definitely not in my comfort zone for sure. So. And also, they are going to expand your thought processes. And that is something that will be a very big plus for you because it will take you into a new realm of understanding and people will more people will understand your energy perfect more Thank people you. will understand your energy as it becomes multifaceted and brings out these great things that you will be experiencing outside your comfort zone but things that are important for your future and for the the vision that you have for the world and for yourself thank and you. god has a vision for you thank you so very much elijah thank you that rings so very true thank you okay um the question from uh, amazing love also known as samuel is um she uh he says she says my um her question is i feel very anxious since the last month my thoughts are eating me i don't know how to stop being the victim with them and finding strength within myself it's like if every day i become more and more contracted can you help me with that yes and you can and, and, and actually samuel is the name so yeah it is actually easy to be the samuel let me say this to you uh one on one and and there are other people that feel this way out there there are other people that have this this thought that they are, they are the victim and they are they cannot get out of that position it is easy to be the victim listen carefully the victim is the easy place the victim is the place of look look at me really the victim is the place of, I must do something and I don't know what it is. Now, I do not know your situation exactly, but I know that people are imposing themselves 
on you thought process wise verbally and things of this nature and you feel like you cannot do, do this any longer perhaps they are people at work perhaps they are people in family perhaps they are people that don't really matter but let me tell you this you must stand up for yourself and if you do not have a voice then you will always be the victim if you do not have a voice within you that says this is who i am this is what i need this is how i have to to move forward then you will always be the victim and i do not want to see that samuel you are a powerful individual they're trying to tell you that you're not they're trying to tell you that you are their puppet their their can in you're in their control so what is it that you must do you must find a way in yourself to return good for evil first they are going to be confounded by the fact that you are not unhappy that you are joyful find your joy find that joy within you so that you can break free of this victim persona find your joy of love of understanding of of who you are as an individual so that when they come against you you can be the example of love that you can be the example of what they do not expect of energy and power and internal strength you do have this and believe it or not this is the first step out of victim being a victim is to return love for evil return love for negativity return love and positivity for those that are weak and depend on you too much Samuel you are you are in the middle of a change and now the beginning of this change now uh, well you have already started to change a little but you must show them who you are you must be yourself you must break free of this victim identity and many of you have that in one way or another someone makes you a victim something makes you a victim and you are you are held you are held captive by it because you do not want to cause trouble you do not want to cause uh, you are not confrontational and you do not have to be the only confrontation they will have is with your positive side, with your love, with your understanding, with your great energy to push forward in the positive. And believe it or not, they will back off. They will back off. I have experienced it in my life. I have experienced it in many of my lives. Look at my scriptures. I have called down fire from heaven against evil because I stand in love. And if they refuse to look or be part of the positivity, then God will move them aside somehow. You must have faith that that is true. And that is a problem with this world today. There's very little faith. Pe they, people are taught not to pursue what they want to do. People are told, no, you can't do that. People are told, no, you will never be successful at that. That is not what God teaches. God teaches that he wants you to be who he wants you to be and he wants you to be yourself he doesn't want you to change your life and be someone else 
I know the Bible teaches, be like Christ, be like God. How can you possibly be someone that you are not? You can have that beauty and Christ-like attitudes in you, but you will never be him. You have to be yourself. You have to be who God made you to be. You are not someone else. You cannot step into someone else's shoes and live a successful life because you are yourself. Oh, sure, you might have some success living in another persona, another thought process, and but you won't be happy. You might be somewhat successful. But is it really successful if you're not happy? You may find that you have more money than some. You may have more of this or more of that and I, I, I. But when it comes down to being happy, you are only happy when you are yourself and that you are doing the things of your highest resonation and pleasing God with that. All right, I am on the soapbox once again. But is there any others that want to speak? Yes, David has a question, and then also so does April after David. David, go ahead. Hello. Greetings. Hi, Elijah. Hello. I, uh, so good to speak with you again. Um, I like your energy and the way that you speak. I have um, um, a friend of mine that I spent the day with yesterday and uh, found out a little bit more that, well, I, I had a channeling and I asked, they said that she's, she's real unhappy and last night we had dinner and I found out a little more deeper why, because of her condition of fibromyalgia. And uh, I wanted to get a little better understanding on how how I could help her um, because I was sending energy and when I sent the energy to her, something strange happened. I felt like I was felt some of her energy because she smokes to reduce the pain and I felt like I was a little bit high. Does, does, can that happen if you send energy to somebody as a side note? I think what you were feeling is not part of her energy, but part of the energy of giving. God can give you that high feeling of spirituality when you give of yourself and try to help others and try to give them uh, some relief. What you might have been also feeling is that some of her thought processes were saying, please help me, please help me. and God does not want you to be burdened by what she is going through, but he wants you to continue to send love, light, and healing, correct? So, so okay. let me tell you this. How you can help her more is have her, you see, she needs to help herself more a little. She needs to understand that she holds happiness in her own hand. Just as everyone holds happiness in their own lives by being themselves and working through their problems, she needs to understand that this is not going to destroy her. This is a lesson to be learned. This, when she learns how to control it and how to get above it, she will know how to teach other people how to get over it and above it. But what you can do is be an example of light, love, and goodness to her. And be wise and tell her, look, I know that it might be physical pain. I know that it might be that you feel that you are being tormented by the universe or God or whoever. But you must understand you are in control of your joy. You know that if you bring God into this situation in a greater way, 
in a greater way, in a healing way, in a loving way. He can help you overcome all things. There is healing in God's love and in faith to God, believing that he is going to help. But it sounds to me like she is in the victim place. She feels as if she is a victim of this particular disease and cannot get away from it. But she must express. She is also a healer. And we have a, a psychic fair coming up tomorrow, today, today and tomorrow. Well, let her healing be a beautiful example of who she is. Let that come out as a great positivity. But when she is healing, she doesn't go around telling people how she feels. She goes around trying to help others try to heal. Is that not correct? I think so. So let her be an example and let her rise above her illness because she is healing others. What a beautiful thing for someone that's afflicted with something as, as strong as fibromyalgia to be healing others. She should be a very joyful and thankful that she is able to do so. And she should really not be looking at herself as the victim, but be sending out that love, that healing energy, so that others can be brought forward and risen up. One, you see, uh, I know how sad people can be, and I know how hard it can be to be in these situations. But there is a way through it with God's help, always. And uh, one uh, one concern that I noticed uh, is when you're in pain, sometimes you do certain movements to distract yourself, like just kind of moving a lot and s s clenching and just stuff like that. And she was concerned about being in a place with so many people and then having to feel this pain and then doing these types of movements so that she won't be able to hide the pain from one everyone else is there anything you can say about this she shouldn't have to hide her pain that's kind of how i felt hiding your pain is not true to yourself in many ways but if there is someone there at a healing festival that wants to work on her and help her to feel better. That would be wonderful. And you have helped her. You have been part of that. But maybe it's up to you to find some others to come to her and give her more healing energy so that when these things happen and she wants to use her healing energy on others, and has to do certain movements, that she first has a healing so that she can help others without feeling all this pain. Okay. okay. Help how, her how first. How much healing help with her pain, though? What? How much will the healing that I give her help with her pain? How do you tell? As much as she allows it. Okay. Thank you. Um, April has a question. Thank yes. you, Elijah. You're welcome. Yes. Who has a question? April. April, are you there? Hello? Oh. Okay, we'll come back to her. Eva, you have a question. Hi, Elijah. Um, blessings. I have a question about my brother. I have a brother on this physical realm who is very precious to me, let's call it like this. And I have a question about him. Uh, first of all, is he also Fendorian? And my other question, he seems to have some right now problems with his health and his doctor doesn't know what's going on. 
So I would love to keep him in this room. So uh, if you could give me any ideas, I would be very grateful. Thank you. Well, first of all, you are supportive of him, and this is a great light to him. At least I hope so. How does he uh, react to your giving him support? I cannot say that I've been sending him a lot of love. It's more like I've been having him in my in him in my loving thoughts. Yes. Have you been in contact with him or been one on one with him? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Your example is important right now. Be loving, kind, beautiful, and outreaching and helpful. His situation is interesting. I can see him now. He is, yes, he is Fendorian to a small degree, not as much as you are. But, yes, he is needing help. He needs to understand that this is a changing point in his life. He needs to give his faith over to God. He needs to understand that he can be healed and he can have uh, a greater life. Right now, he's going through a great deal of fear, and fear has no place in the world, really. It, what is it that, that fear does? It makes you stop. It makes you retreat. It makes you less of a person. Fear does only negative things. And people will say, well, I need my fear because what if I am going to go around sick people? I don't want to do that. I should be afraid to go to the hospital. I should be afraid to be near these people that are ill. I should be afraid to go where there are things that are, might be harmful. If you believe that God is your heart, and he is your protector, there is no place you should fear. There are those that go and walk into the leper colonies and help those that have leprosy and do not contract it because they have the faith of God that they are going to only help. There are those that work in the hospitals every day, every day, that do not get sick. Why? Because some of them believe that God is protecting them. Some of them have worked up immunities in their systems as well. But you must be fearless and go to him and be, do not be afraid to say, I love you, I support you, and let me know whatever you need. And I will be there for you. Now, I know he may not accept that right away, but listen to yourself when you say it. It is that you are supporting him in the greatest way possible. Be fearless. And your name is Eva, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Very good. Sorry for calling you Eva. <laughs> that is all right. He has the, heard that name many times. Mm. The question from April is in the chat, so I'll read it to you. It says, um, April says she has a question about a reoccurring dream from the time she was five until she was a teenager. Um, and she said, she said, I would take it. I had just, I always just said no because I didn't know what I was taking. When I asked, when I said I would take it, I had the dream anymore. What was this about? Okay, let me start over. I, I apologize. She said when she was a child until she was a teenager, she had a dream where she was being told to take something, and she would always say no and she, because she didn't know what she was taking. And then when she finally said, I will take it, she didn't have the dream anymore. What was that about? Yes, it was about a leap of faith. God was talking to her and saying, accept me for who I am. Take these gifts that I have to give to you. And she did not want them because she did not know what these gifts were. 
They were gifts of the Spirit. And once she uh, eventually took them, there was no need for the dream any longer. And now, at this time in your life, you are starting to understand what these gifts are all about. And they are starting to open up and they are starting to be part of your understanding. And so God does not need to say, take these gifts, take these gifts any longer. Thank you very much for that. I don't think that there's any other questions in the chat at the moment. There's a question here in the room and you must come closer. Okay, thank you. Elijah. Thank you. Elijah. Um, I've had a reoccurring dream the last four days and it's about um, earth changes and things like that and um, drastic earth changes and and, and also um, it, it was more about a, a particular a job and um, a job a job that I I I was out traveling and I had to get back to this job and they said well you're not going to make it in time you just you're just not going to make it you can't get back to your job and get to your job in time that was this morning but it was all still stemmed around different earth changes right what do the earth changes mean to you what are they are they just signifying disasters Yes. They're signifying disasters to you. And and in every one of these particular dreams, are you trying to get back to your job? Or is it just the last one? Um, just the, the one I remembered. What were you doing in the other dreams then? Um, I all walking around uh, all different areas but also moving around, just moving around. Are you helping people or yes. just moving around? Helping people. All right, very good. Let me tell you what these this dreams uh, are about. There will be disasters. There will be times when people need your help. And they're not earthquake disasters or volcanoes or right. things of this nature. Right. They could be disasters of someone's home burning down. They could be a disaster of someone uh, not having enough money to live. They can be the a disaster of any sort. But you are there to help. And what you're what you are worrying about is that you won't be able to help enough. You are worried about running out of your own resources not to be able to help others. Now take listen to what I have to say. You are important. You must survive as well. So do not overgive or overextend yourself in these matters. You are finding that you cannot get back to the place you were because you're overextending yourself. Did, does that make sense to you? Yes. So you are losing yourself by overextending yourself. Take heed, ground yourself, know what is logical, what is loving, and what is foolish to give. Because some people give so much of themselves, they have no resources left for themselves. And they need to survive, and they need to have their own strength to be giving maybe to be loving but if you overextend yourself you cannot do the job properly listen to me carefully my children because if you do overextend yourself you cannot properly survive you will be too weak you will be t getting ill and you will find yourself in a place of disregard. So pray that you are doing the right thing. Pray that your gifts, that you're giving, that your understanding of the situations are good so that you may 
Use your talents wisely and effectively and efficiently. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is to say to you, some of you are very, very gung-ho. That is a wonderful thing. It is wonderful that you are a gung-ho kind of person and that you move forward and you step forward and say, yes, I'm going to do that. Yes, 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 yes. But do not sacrifice yourself in the process. We need you for the future as well as the present. And if you overextend yourself, you can find yourself in a place of weakness, in a place where you put yourself into difficulty. And I think some of you understand what I'm saying. Now that does not mean to say, do not give anymore. Do not, do not, do not uh, be gung-ho, but just be wise in how you do your mission. Be wise and be the help that you need to be to the ones that need it the most. Thank you. Um, Marlene does have a question. Marlene. Yes, greetings, uh, Elijah. Greetings. Uh, you, thank you. Uh, you asked us if we had dreams or visions. Yes. Uh, Two days ago, I was guided to uh, drive off the road and take images and videos. Can I show you the image, please? Yes. I feel this, this is a message for the collective. Well, then you have to turn your camera on, please. There you go. Great. Are we on? I cannot see anything yet. Oh, okay. okay. Um, <laughs> you got to pull I, back a little bit. You're a little bit very close. Pull back just a little more. Okay, just yes, a little so more. I do not see anything. Her camera is not on. Uh, it's on now, so you should see it. There's a little bit of a delay. So, Karen, um, if, if you present her to I have everyone. Her, I have her presented to everyone. We do not okay. see. We see you, and that's all. Mm, you shouldn't see me at all. Because I'm, my camera's not even on. <laughs> oh, there we go. Very good. <laughs> Do we see anything now? Yes. Yes. Well, what part of the country do you live in? I live in Canada. Very well. And what is it that we're looking at? Well, what attracted me to was the the sun, which is which was uh, humongous. And to me, did not have uh, was it was very different to what I've seen yeah. lately. So I as put I, as I as you can see, I put numbers just to help us be clear with the elements in that particular image. Yes, I see that. And what is it that you believe this means to you? Well. It's, um, it has to do with um, perhaps a message that will be thing, uh, uh, something unfolding in the near future. Yes. Right now, let me tell you, Marlene, that there are great, um, uh, there's a great deal of CMEs, coron coronal mass ejections. Do you know what that is? Yes. There's a great deal of them at this time, and the sun looks much larger because it is somewhat closer at this time. Um, you are actually closer to the sun than what anyone would want you to believe. But it is not dangerous at this time. But there is a great message here about signs and symbols in the universe. And there are great signs in the stars as well. Not only are you taking a picture of uh, uh, a prophecy, but you are also taking a picture of the destiny of your planet. 
Thank you. And uh, you are right to have pulled over and taken that picture because this picture shows the how huge the sun looks in the sky at that point. Thank you. Is there any um, anything that I can do to collaborate in a certain way? You will know that answer as time moves forward. I cannot give you that that definition yet. Thank you. But you are gifted. Thank you. And you will be able to use those gifts. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I know it was a little cryptic, but I'm sorry I'm not allowed to give the full explanation yet. I understand a little bit very well. Excellent. I'm glad. Thank you. Hello, me Gabriel here. Greetings. I am wondering about my dreams. Uh, all my life, I've always been alone in my dreams. It's almost, and sometimes I dream about groups, and I'm not allowed to be be in those groups or anything. I'm always supposed to be alone in my dreams. Or can you say anything about that? Yes, you have felt. Um, a disconnect from third dimension, as many of you have. But this particular disconnect is for more than one reason. It is because not only you feel the disconnect because you are of a higher energy than humanity, but that uh, the, the energies of humanity have judged you in certain ways and made you feel not a part of their energy. What, what must happen at this time is that you must understand that you are not the victim. You are someone who is talented and gifted and you must accept yourself for who you are so that you might move forward in a very positive and very powerful way because you, within you, there are many gifts. And right now, you are not seeing them. Right now, you're not experiencing them. Right now, you feel that you are going through something of a, a alone time and that you shouldn't be, this shouldn't be happening. And you are correct. Take charge of your energy. Take charge of your positivity. Take charge of all those things that are within you. You have many gifts, uh, but you feel that no one is there to share them with. But here we are. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, because I, I would love to be able to dream and meet others in my dream. Too. You will be able to, you see your dream is that of isolation and you feel very isolated right now. You do not see that there is any closeness with any real individual in your life. And that is your dream. It is telling you, you are separated from everyone and everything, but we can connect you. You can connect you. And we will want to be part of who you are and what you have to give to us. We know that you have talents. You just have to understand be yourself and do not be afraid of who that is, even though some others may judge it, even though some others may say, you are not allowed to do that, you're not allowed to say that, you're not allowed to be that. But that is who you are, and so you must be what God made you to be. So pray that God continues to teach you who you are and that you will stand firm, come forward, and present yourself to the world. Yeah, and and I always, all my lifetime, I always felt like I have kind of like a twin out there in the universe, but I can't connect to him. Like we're really connected, but I can't connect to it here on Earth. You are. You have already connected to this one already. 
and you will connect again. Do not doubt. Be positive about your connections. Be positive about the, the future. Be positive about your missions. Be positive about your gifts. All these things revolve around what other people have said and done to you. So now help yourself move forward. Do not be that victim of them, but be the true self that you are, which is very talented and very giving and very, very loving. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Sheer has a question now. Hello, Elijah. How are you? I am well. Um, actually, I don't have any dreams lately, which is strange, but something did happen to me, and I wish uh, to know what exactly happened. Very well. Well, my sister got married in Cyprus uh, two weeks ago. Yes. And on the flight back from Cyprus to Israel, they collected the uh, donations on the plane for children in need and neither me or my mother that sat next to me had any any money on us and i just uh, closed my eyes for a second and when i opened it i saw a two euro coin on my lap and i look up there's nowhere it could have felt from and the one next to me was completely asleep with her back next to me and my mother has no idea how it came to me this is because you wanted to give something so badly that it was given to you so you could give it you also wanted to be the good example in this situation and you know that if you would give the coin, others would see the example that that would bring about your person. And this is what it was all about. These kinds of things will always happen with you because you want them to know that you love them and that you want to give and that you are there to be a part of the, the solution and not the problem. I see. I see. Thank you very, very much. And is there something that you want to tell me? Maybe a message or something personal? Uh, the personal things cannot happen on here because too many ears are... Well, something that you want to say, not a message or something. I see. But let me tell you this, that your perseverance and the perseverances of all the others in your path, in your mission, will pay off. Do not give up. Do not turn away. And do not be disheartened. Because at the end of the road, there is a great reward. Thank you very, very much and much love. You are welcome. Thank you. Uh, David has a question, Elijah, please. Yes. Hello. Yes. Um, I'm interested in something I kind of know the answer, but it's regarding uh, having faith and connecting with God. Um, I'm wondering about the difference. If you have a different faith, the, the other faith would be like Buddhism and uh, Nam Yoho Renge Kyo and just a little bit different. What's, what's the difference for that person to have? You said to have faith in God. So. Everybody has their own way of looking at God. And God presents himself in everyone's soul slightly differently. He comes to each person and he puts something of himself in the soul of each person. And so they may perceive him slightly differently. So he has many names and many perceptions. So, yes, God has many names. God has many people that perceive him one way or another. Some may see him as cruel, and some may see him as totally loving. Where do they get these perceptions? 
They find them in the world around them. But if they were to look into the soul, they will find the true perception is that he is love, unconditional, and beauty, and wisdom, and understanding, light, forgiveness, and hope for everything. So, yes, you may find him in any of these religions, and some may say, there is no God, but there is just beauty and peace. Find God in any way that you can. And when you find him, celebrate him. And when you celebrate him, know that he is celebrating you. And so when he is celebrating you, then you can get to know him better. Beautiful. There is a question in the room. Okay, thank you. This is more something that's been, it's not a dream, it's Barbara. Yeah, hello. I know. It's something that's been going on since childhood that I never really felt connected here on Earth. Correct. I always felt like I belonged up there and I would miss my home. Can you explain that to me? Of course. Yes, there are many of the people like you in this time, in this age. She feels disconnected from this world, feels like she doesn't belong here, and that she belongs up there somewhere. Many of you have come from different uh, dimensions to come to this planet at this time for reasons of love and understanding, for, for reasons of purpose, for missions, to, for ascension, for whatever you want to call it. But yes, you will feel that disconnect. You will feel that you are not actually part of this planet. It's much harsher than what you were used to. But adjust. Ground yourself and adjust. Because this is where your mission is. This is where you must be. And this is uh, where the, the, the true work is. I know that you will always still feel that, mm -hmm. that you are disconnected. But remember that you were born into the third dimension for a reason, and you may have brought yourself here purposefully to do something great for this world, or to hold light for the planet, or to be a witness or an example to people around you. Remember, do not give up on this third dimensional mission that is there for you. You are a bright light. You are able to show people that you're able to laugh, love, and and be part of third dimension, even though there's afflictions, mm -hmm. even though there's strong things that may hold you back and have held you back in the past. But you're breaking through. You're becoming part. You're opening up. You're showing the world that you are here for a reason. You're welcome. Thank you. Gabriel had a question in the in the room. Gabriel. Gabriel. It wasn't from me. It's from Yasmina. She's wondering if you have any messages for her or any messages from her guides to her. Yes. Um, what was her name? Yasmina. Yasmina. One moment, please. She is looking for a great message. She is looking for understanding at this time. I would like to come to her and speak directly to her and tell her this. You are a great being. You have great love and understanding. Rise up. There is a need for you in your area, in, in where you are. I am vaguely seeing that there are some gifts that you want to be able to use that you are not being able to use at this time. But uh, do not be afraid. Be bold. Be fearless. You will be able to use there is healing in your hands. I think this is one of the gifts that you want to use. There is much more, but I cannot bring it to you right now. 
Thank you. Are you open to taking some questions from the YouTube uh, group? Yes, if that is, if, if they are wanting to ask. Yes, there's some questions here. Um, I'll, let me just start. I have Michelle's. People who are in the YouTube, you're going to have to retype your question because there's a lot of chat and I can't go backwards. So I'll start with Michelle's. Um, Michelle says, if possible, could Elijah speak uh, to any direction that she needs to be paying attention, attention to um, about her sole purpose because she has never, no sense of where she should be and why. She's trapped in an emotional pain. Emotional pain is very much entrapment. You must look a little bit beyond it to see where it's from. Maybe you already know what all these things are from why you're feeling what you're feeling and that you feel like the victim once again because that's what what it is when you feel all this when you feel trapped you are a victim now there are those around you that are trapping you and you are trapping yourself to some of some extent because you do have gifts and you do know about these gifts you do understand these gifts and you are not really using them the way that they need to be used. They need to be used on a more abundant, a more, more people should be getting the benefits from them instead of just the air around you in the atmosphere. You are, you are using them sometimes, but there's no one that's really benefiting but you. And now we need for you to start benefiting others. So what that means is you must uh, take charge of your life. Take charge of your emotions. Take charge of what you those talents that you have and don't let them go to waste. You know what they are. You know where you can use them. And you know why you should use them. That is why you must stand up and go there. Do not stay in this place that you are at the moment. Go out into the world. Find a place to use these gifts. A Reiki share, a metaphysical group, somewhere where you can share your thoughts and processes with others. You need to be with others and not alone. Thank you. I have to say, I, re I misread her question a little bit, um, but we'll just leave it there. Also, um, let me see. Pete had a question, and he said, um, he said, I saw a two-way road, and my parents were walking in one direction. I was walking in another, and when I noticed my parents are going another route, route I ran back. Um, and as I did, I saw a, flat, a black figure as I ran past it. All right. This is telling me something about you as an individual. Of course, you do not want to lose your parents. Of course, you do not. I know that you understand which direction they're going and why you were walking the other direction. The black figure that you passed was telling you you can be with your parents, but you do not have to believe as your parents do. You do not have to act as your parents do. You do not have to be become part of their world to still hold on to them. But you must be yourself. You must have your own identity. You must be clear on your direction. And it is not in the same direction as your parents and the dark figure is saying that you you are not going the right direction to chase after them if you would like to find out who you are and what your direction really is you must look inside you must look to God but you know that what your parents believe is not what you believe exactly you have a clearer understanding of spirituality you have a clearer understanding of what good and love goodness and love and faith and wisdom is and so do not run back to their thought processes 
but continue with your own thought processes. You will not lose them directly, but you will find yourself. Thank you for that. Um, there's another question again from Pete. He said uh, he had a dream while he was sleeping. He saw a Zeta in a large black cal cal um, caterpillar cocoon and passed by them both. He doesn't know what they meant. Um, a Zeta gray? I believe so. Well, this is a very unusual dream. A caterpillar is something that turns into something else. And if he's thinking of, of it the way I am thinking of it, the Zeta Grays are turning into a more positive society. So he is seeing that there is a portion of the Zeta Gray society that is going to morph into the butterfly, but are still in the caterpillar state. Does that make sense to you? Yes, to me, but the, to me, yes. <laughs> That is the closest, uh, that is the simplest of the explanations. There is something else there, but it is not uh, something that I should share with the group. But it is about the Zeta Grays becoming more positive, that 30% of their population have accepted positivity now as a possible solution to the problems of their worlds. Um, and the caterpillar is the example of the first step in receiving this positivity. They have not yet turned into the butterfly, but they are working toward it. Thank you. Um, Michelle was asked, also had a question. She said, well, she said she feel, it's feel like she's supposed to be going public with her stuff, but she doesn't know. And yes. She, okay. Yes, go. Michelle, <laughs> it's what I said, you have to get out into the public, into the Reiki shares, into the metaphysical groups to share who you are so that people will understand that you are making an effort to share your talents. And there are those that already know who you are. And there are those that will share uh, information about you to others if that is what you wish but right now you have blocked yourself in you know in an actually very negative way and so if speaking about you in a positive way you have to make that positive move into society this will help you feel better about yourself and it will show people that you are not just uh locked into this emotional battle that you're trying to free yourself from it. Thank you. And also, um, Dev Kumar asks, he says, is there a method or recommendation mm -hmm. to heal eyesight without modern, um, without modern um, glasses, mm -hmm. conventional glasses? He said, um, well, it's a matter of faith, yes. So most people are wearing glasses um, now, doing watching too much TV and computers and things like that. It is an interesting question. Eyesight has been, um, be, because this person here has very poor eyesight, it has been one of the subjects that have, has come up over and over again about improving eyesight and uh, becoming visually uh, per more perfect. But let me tell you this, faith can heal eyes, and God can heal eyes, Jesus can heal eyes, aliens can take you to their ships and heal your eyes, and there are many ways to uh, get your eyes healed. However, sometimes, and I say sometimes, because this may not be the case for you, but I do want to bring it up. Sometimes there is a reason for failing vision. Perhaps it will open up something else deeper inside. Perhaps it will make your ears listen a little more carefully. Perhaps it will help the heart feel a little stronger about the things that it, you are doing. Perhaps it will 
let you see that the soul is bright inside. Vision is sometimes something that keeps people down. And let me explain that a little bit. They see things they want. They're tempted by the world. And it's very much visually oriented. And when your vision reduces, it may help you to gain a more spiritual outlook, a more inward vision of God, a more outward vision of yourself. Does that make sense? I believe so, yes. Thank you. Um, there's a question uh, from uh, Caroline that wants to know about the Ark of the Covenant, if it exists and what is it? Yes, it's in Ethiopia. And it is Thank you. the storage area for the Ten Commandments. That is what it's always been said to be. Right. And uh, there has been said that there are curses around it, and they, that you cannot get near it, it, it is really not from the earth. They said it is really, that it was made here, but it was not made with human hands. And so there's an energy around it that humans cannot really adjust to. And so that's why it is kept secluded from people. You cannot go look at the Ark of the Covenant without consequence because it has radioactivity involved in it. It has energies that are there that you humans cannot withstand. And so it is safe and it is guarded. But it is not really for it to be put on view to the public, unless you were hundreds of feet away from it to observe it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Shir has a question, please. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Elijah, I have a follow-up question about the Zeta Grays that are now starting to come to the positive side. I can't help by but thinking about all the things that they have done to humanity, including being a part of Illuminati and stuff and abductions. Is there any consequence to that, or they just go back, become like There is consequence. There is always consequences to negativity. I cannot tell you what price they will pay, because I do not know what price God will have them pay. But yes, un unconditional love to forgive them is what we must do. We must accept them if that is how they are choosing to move forward. There are still 70% of them that are not going to be positive, but 30% of them, which is a great deal, great number, it's actually 31%, is a great number of them that want to try this and give it a chance. And I say, yes, there are, there were, there, and there will be, consequences and there have been consequences for their negativity they've been through a great deal of of pain and suffering because of how negative they've been one to another even you cannot survive family life if you're in a negative situation so therefore their family lives were very horrific but there are other consequences but I do not want to point them out. I see, because I do know that they were healed and the king even came here and spoke in one of the webinars and stuff like that. I was uh, under the impression it was the entire civilization. No, it was not. Not all of them are going to move forward with the king. He is still king of all. And he realizes that there are many that have not accepted positivity, but he is ruling with a more positive attitude, and he will bring positivity to even those that are negative. And it has caused some uproar in the Zeta Gray uh, kingdoms, plural, but it is not something that is made public. 
I see. And about the Ark of the Covenant, except for the Ten Commandments, I know that the Cain of Aaron is also there. The, the what? The Cain of Aaron, the oh, yes. brother of Moses. Yes. And from what I know, uh, he has been reincarnated here on Earth. Do you think that in the future he will be allowed to have his cane back? No. He doesn't need it in this lifetime. It is not part of this, uh, this societal thought process. And so he will not need it to do his mission. Okay. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Stephanie has a question. Yes. I believe that she wants you to ask right. it. Okay, thanks. Well, oh, did, go ahead. But if you can hear me, okay. If you come closer, we yep. will. Listen. We can hear you. Yep. Okay. I have a follow up question regarding the arc as well. Because of the energy that is emanating from the ark how are those who are responsible for the keeping of the ark being protected are they not fully human necessarily or no there it is there is um you you read the stories about how the ark was taken from one place to another and this is true they used uh there is mica do you know what mica is Micah yes. was used to protect those that were carrying the ark in the past, and Micah is also used to protect people from its energies even now. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I have a question. Hello? Okay. Yes, it's April. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, yes April, just, go ahead. you're just very soft. Um, I belonged to a Buddhist group for a while, and whenever we would chant the Lotus Sutra and say Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, I would yes. laugh. I would laugh. I would enjoy it so much. And yes. I wanted to know. I had uh, one of the leaders tell me that I was being uh, disrespectful and uh, not not taking it seriously. And she was psychic, and she misunderstood her psychic impressions a great deal, and she caused a lot of disharmony. And I, I finally stopped going because I would laugh so much it would disturb everybody else. I want to because, know about. Because God is joyful, and the words of these books have many joyful things in them and talk about very interesting things that you may not find in other books. God actually talked about flying objects and things of this nature in these books and uh, spoke about many things in a very light way. And you were fine to laugh, not to disturb the others, of course, but that the joy of God was on you when you were reading these different things. And that is all right. You, she was saying that she, you were being disrespectful because it bothered others, but in in hindsight you realize that it was the joy of god coming through you that that you were feeling and that she should have felt it as well if she was as psychic as she said she was then she would bring harmony and not trouble yes did that answer your question april Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is, was that all right for you, April? I know that you are a very spiritual person, but you enjoyed 
what it had to say. And you saw it in a very beautiful and loving and beautiful, joyful way. So it was not inappropriate for you to laugh because you saw what God was doing. Thank you. I don't know if she's still with us. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Is there another? There's a question here. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yesterday, Hi. yesterday around five fifty-three p.m., I saw something in the sky that was pretty huge. I don't know if it was a plane or if it was a ship. Um. Oh, she saw something in the sky yesterday. Sorry. Um. And it was huge. And it was probably a ship. I do not know for sure. I cannot see exactly what you saw. But there are many ships around the planet at this time. Uh, more than ever before. Because they're observing the way that the land is moving. There is so many unique phenomena happening on the planet at this time. They are just, uh, some of them are just, looking at it scientifically others are looking at it science uh, uh spiritually and others are looking at it uh prophetically and things of this nature so yes it, it was probably a ship i didn't expect to be here this long we like you but, <laughs> but like you. i see that Time is moving forward, and you do not have time for many more visitors. Well, there is there is a, one more question. If you if you do have a time for a question, well, uh, I might as well take it because <laughs> I don't think anyone else will be able to come in. Okay. Well, the question is a very nice question. Uh, Stephanie wants to know if you can give a short description of the term Hallelujah. Hallelujah means holy praises. And um, it is a powerful gesture to say hallelujah because hallelujah is to be, uh, was termed, I believe, be first by the angels and them giving praise to God from their realm, saying holy praises. That is exactly what it means. And it is only for God. It cannot be given, you cannot say holy praises about anything but God. And so therefore, it's, it's a word that has a definite and resolute definition and a resolute way to be used. And when you say hallelujah, you are bringing your soul into the highest realms of praise to God. Well, thank you and hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Thank you. There is a question here in the room. Thank you. Yes, it is Angela. I know you're speaking of phenomenon um, that is going on on the planet right now with all the different ships and things watching. Um, are you able to like speak about like where all the water is going around the it is it's a scientific anomaly they know where it's going um the thing is about the water the, she's talking about the receding waters in some areas yeah. where they receding away from the shorelines and seeming like uh it's there's less water in the world whereas Actually, there's going to be more water in the world because the Arctic Circle is melting. Um, and it's very obvious that it's going to eventually just be an ocean instead of a frozen area, at least completely frozen. Uh, the receding water is scientific. It is because of the way the energies are moving on the planet. It is because there are some fault lines in the ocean that ha have taken some of the water away, but they will push back out. Um, it's not anything to be 
Uh, I cannot really speak about it in depth because I don't know scientifically how to talk about it, but I do know about it. The thing is, it's just one of the signs and wonders of this era, and that is to be taken seriously. In, in what way should we take it seriously? What do we do? That is part of the prophecy of these times. Okay. Now I, I know. More questions. You know, I just want to say one more thing. Of course. I know many people have gone through in many eras of this earth and said, "Oh, it's the end times. This is the time where all things must end." And oh, the end is here, and there is not going to be an end. You may say these signs and wonders are the end of an era, perhaps, or the end of a certain belief system, or the end of what you might call futility in some respects. But there will be no end completely. There will be newness after that. So do not fret. The end is not near. Oh, yes, there will be disasters and things of this nature on your planet as there always has been. Always has been. They may be greater and more substantial, but it is not the end of the world. It is not the end of the world. It is the sign of change for the world. There are great changes coming to the world, but it is not the end of the world. So take heart. Be part of a change in the world, but not the end of it. No, there will not be an end of the world. God may change the world. God may change the way you see the world and how the world exists, but it will still be here. So do not fret. And do not listen to those that say, oh, doom, gloom. It will all end up in a positive realm. It will all end up in positivity, new heaven and new earth. Is that not a new beginning? And what do they mean by that? Someday I'll tell you. But right now, I just want to say, there is no doom and gloom and no end of the world. So do not even worry about that. There will be some catastrophes. No question. There always was. There always will be. But there is no end. Not now. Thank you for that. That's very good to hear. And, and I've had the exact same feeling, the same communication. So. I, exactly. I thank you for sharing that, confirming it. Um, Amanda and, just got here, so um, she might have a question. Do you have a question, Amanda, for Elijah? Oh, I, I put her on the spot. You have a question. Go ahead in the room. Yes, I have an. Oh, oh, okay. Go ahead. I have an off-topic question here. I don't know who is being channeled right now because I can't see the chat. It's so, Elijah. Elijah. Oh, I wanted to know something about something I read. There is a being called the angel of the Lord. If you know this being, could you tell us who this is? When, when the human on earth saw him, he saw him in, in fire and called him the angel of the Lord as being a specific angel or important one. Could you tell us who this is? When he called him the angel of the Lord, he did not know who he was uh, referring to. So he he was not sure if it was an angel or what it was. And in reality, he was seeing a version of a trans, uh, a very changed uh, Christ figure, a very changed figure of Jesus in gold. It was actually Jesus and the divinity of him shown around him. 
and this was the angel of the Lord because Jesus is like an angel, but he is of his own divinity with God and the Holy Spirit. They do exist as one and separate personalities. God has more than just one personality, more than one exists uh, uh, a per perception to humanity. So therefore, he is oh, so beyond what you could imagine. And so when they, they saw the angel of the Lord, it was really the Lord looking like an angel. So understand that it was Jesus and all the elements of divinity that he um, represents. All right. Very cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Elijah. Thank you. I think I will go now. I think your time is about up. It is about up. Yes, we've had an amazing interaction with you. We, we usually don't get you all to ourselves for this long. So No, I Thank wasn't you. planning on it, <laughs> but it is what God wanted that it must yeah. be. Must be. Always. Must be what God wanted. <laughs> because that is what happened. Yeah, exactly. Well, again, my, um, many blessings and thank you and namaste. Thank you for being here. Namaste to all of you. As I said, I love that because it is meaning that the spirit within me bows down to the spirit that is within you, which is beautiful, lovely, and has great purpose. And I will always bow down to you because you all have purpose. And I will be your servant because there is a time that we all must serve. Much love. Much love. Much love. Thank you.